Greetings on a Wednesday evening and you are joining with Business Today on Channel 9 this Wednesday evening. Great to have you and great to be with you to bring you business and also speak about business and speak about entrepreneurship. So if you have been an avid follower of this program, you probably know what we do. We bring inspiring individuals in the corporate and also in the business landscape in Sri Lanka and we inspire you. That's exactly what we do. So, so stay tuned with us for the next 30 minutes to get inspired on Business Today. When it comes to business personalities, we bring various types of business personalities. Those who have studied or those who are studying or those who are exceptionally good at it, they have been hired by different companies out there in Sri Lanka. So today also we have a guest like that. Today's guest is actually a perfect example for you to think if you are thinking about work-life balance and also thinking about success in both sports, extracurricular and also in academics and also entrepreneurship and also having that mindset inside you. This is a perfect example. So we are going to now reveal who our guest is for today. Mr. Sanjay Fernando is the group CFO of Eastwaran Brothers Exports Private Limited. He leads the overall finance function of the group. He is responsible for driving the group's financial and investment strategy, planning and analysis, treasury, financial reporting and controls and information technology. The group has three subsidiaries in Sri Lanka two in India, several partnerships, dealerships and operations in 57 countries. He was formerly an executive director at Emirates Resorts Pasikuda and an alternate director of the first utility scale solar power project of Sri Lanka. In his corporate career spanning over 20 years, Sanjay has gathered expertise in the fields of investment banking, business development, operations management, finance, treasury management, risk management, internal control and auditing. He is a Master of Financial Economics from the University of Colombo, Associate Member of the CIMA UK, a Chartered Global Management Accountant and is certified in Treasury Management and Foreign Exchange Operations by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. In addition to his corporate career, Sanjay is also the National Triathlon and Duathlon Coach of Sri Lanka and formerly National Women's Water Polo Coach. Under his guidance, Sri Lanka won the first gold medal in triathlon and duathlons at the South Asian Games in 2019 and the first medal in women's water polo in 2009. Sanjay was also a national athlete and represented the country in water polo from 2000 to 2005. He also participated at the Singapore International Triathlon in 2018 and won the 12th place. He is the first and only World Triathlon Level 2 certified coach in Sri Lanka. Holds a diploma in water polo from Hong Kong, certified in first aid, CPR, and AED USA, and a certified sports administrator of the International Olympic Committee. If a profile like that would not excite you as a corporate uh, personality in the industry or someone who is studying and who he wants to be inspired by a personality like that, I don't know what really will. This personality is actually someone who has excelled not just in business, not just in entrepreneurship, but also in many aspects in life. To the point sometimes when, when you call him, he is actually not in Colombo. He's somewhere in Gold or somewhere near a coastline on his bike riding uh, a, a, a foot cycle just like that. Because that's how you maintain work-life balance and that personality is right here sitting with next to me and we are privileged to have you on board. Thank you very much and first of all good evening to everyone and thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. It's a ple the pleasure is ours definitely because when you look at the profile you think wow personalities like this exist in Sri Lanka and you have, we are also um, not just a sportsman but also like a Group CFO in the financial sector and also uh, working for a great company in Sri Lanka, which is the Eastwood Brothers Exports Private Limited. So, how has it been for you? Let's talk about that. How has it been for you to create the person that you are today throughout the journey? Firstly, it's nice of you to say that I'm just an ordinary human being. <laughs> and uh, talking about Eastwood Brothers, so Eastwood Brothers ex was established in 1963 by uh, late Mr. VTV Devanayagam Pillay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, down the line, uh, 30 years later, mm -hmm. his son, who is the father of our current chairman, Mr. Ganesh Devanayagam, and vice, cha vice chairman, Mr. Subramaniam Ishwaran, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Ishwaran decided, okay, we need to get into value-added teas right. and started that business. So value-added teas business has been growing since, mm -hmm. and it has grown to be the third, la uh, third largest value-added tea exporter in the country at the moment. So that's where we are. In addition to that, we also do uh, printing and uh, designing mm -hmm. uh, of tea tags, labels and uh, 
at the uh, on Willow. Mm -hmm. So this is the business that we do in Sri Lanka. Right. And in India also we have a similar venture. Right. And uh, on top of that, now we are venturing into a different line where uh, promoting artisanal tea tourism. Mm. So we are doing that. That's project. a new thing. In Sri That's Lanka. a new thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are doing it in uh, Alla. Mm -hmm. So that will come into light within the next year or so. Wow. Okay. So I think uh, this will definitely add some value to uplifting Sri Lanka's economy. So in terms of that, uh, Eastern Brothers, how has it? Uh, what does it do? What does the company do in terms of uh, directly uh, infusing its energy into the Sri Lanka's uh, backbone, the economy? So when it comes to tea, tea comes after uh, the garments and textiles. Mm -hmm. So that contributes about 17 to 18 percent to the economy, mm -hmm. and uh, we are actually contributing a part of it uh, in a, I mean in a very small scale I would say yeah but uh, that's what it is I mean it's mm -hmm. the dollar income that uh, we bring in a day in and out mm -hmm. what about the, the with the hard work uh, of our uh, Employees. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. So, like, when it comes to uh, plantation industry and especially tea uh, in Sri Lanka, where about? I mean, how 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 do you function? Like, which areas do you cover in the hill country? Like, uh, how does that happen in, in terms of manufacturing and operations? Yeah. So, when it comes to procuring tea, what we do is we procure tea straight off the auctions. Right. So we don't own any plantation. Mm -hmm. We procure through the auctions, and if it is required to be imported, also right. based on the customer requirement, mm -hmm. because we do a lot of private labeling, okay. and then we import and uh, do that uh, cover that requirement as well. So mm -hmm. it's all to do with customer requirement mm -hmm. and the end. Uh, consumers need. Mm -hmm. So you basically have identified proper um, customers, and uh, from from um, not just within Sri Lanka but also abroad, and then you are you have implemented sort of created a complete chain of work, starting from the producer and from all the way to the delivery. That's how it works. Yes, it's okay. end to end. Right. So when you talk about the trends in Sri Lanka, now when it comes to tea industry, this is like one of the biggest uh, products that we export out, out, out of the country. But like with the recent developments when it comes to the pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, tea sellers, uh, any exports have been sort of struggling uh, to produce their crop and then to sometimes to even find their buyers. How did Eastern Brothers uh, tackle the situation? So when it comes to the tea industry as a whole, uh, the demand didn't drop yeah. because of the pandemic. Mm. Tea is something that you will consume anyway. But when it comes to uh, the pandemic, the major challenge that everyone, all the industries faced, I would say, mm -hmm. was uh, the freight mm -hmm. related issue. So freight uh, delayed all the input as well as delivering it to the end, con end, end consumer on time. Mm -hmm. So those delays uh, actually uh, hit everyone, but we were managing it by talking to our customers and trying to uh, you know, uh, yeah. Okay, right. So, um, in terms of that, uh, now, as an advice, because you are a group G CFO, and I don't know who else could fi manage finance like you can. You can in any organization, I would say. So, uh, managing finance in any business, uh, what kind of advice do you want to give, especially to the the newcomers, because they tend to go with the flow sometimes, and then sometimes end up in like bankrupt uh, bankruptcy or in any uh, critical situation sometimes. So. What would be the perfect way to manage their finance? I know this is like a broad, um, broad topic, but then again, like if you put it in simple terms from your point of view, because you have been in industry, uh, what kind of advice do you want to give to the newcomers? Because there are so many new businesses that are venturing at the moment in Sri Lanka. There are new investments happening in the country, but they all want to some. They they, don't, they all require some sort of a, uh, input in terms of knowledge. So, from with your knowledge, how should they s like manage them very delicately? So learning is key when it comes to any profession, right? You will be a CFO, CEO, or a CMO, mm. or a, a normal, uh, I mean, uh, executive, right? Yeah. Whatever mm. the level, it's a task. Task. So you need to first understand what you're going to do, what the industry is, mm. and what the industry is demanding. Right. And then once you understand that, you need to have a clear determination and motivation towards what you're doing. Right. Otherwise, what will happen is you will uh, always think whether you are do what you are doing is correct mm -hmm. or you should do it the 
another way mm -hmm. you know you will be always confused yeah, so what you need to do is you need to have a drive towards it and just stick to what you are doing uh, along with the ongoing learning mm -hmm. okay. that's what i think so you must always learn from the uh, from not from the mistakes but make sure that you don't make mistakes by learning them preemptively <laughs> Okay, so in terms of uh, your role as the group uh, CFO, uh, what is your role? How do you contribute to the success of the Eastern Brothers company? So my role is actually driving the financial as well as investment strategy of the company mm -hmm. um, and overlooking the entire finance operation of the group. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, so this involves uh, not just within Sri Lanka but also abroad at the same yes. time. So, what are the countries that you are managing at the moment? So, countries involve mainly Sri Lanka and India, and we have uh, partnerships uh, and dealerships that's uh, ongoing at UK, USA, Australia, Japan, and uh, so many other countries. Fifty-seven countries in total. Mm -hmm. So, it's a in-and-out job. Uh, it's a round-the-clock job, rather. <laughs> it's around the clock because yeah. you're working with different time zones. Yes. Is definitely. that one of the reasons? Okay. Definitely. Right. So, uh, in terms of creating, now you have created a personality that is diverse basically, but like if you stick onto the, this one side of being a financial specialist, uh, what kind of attributions have you included in yourself? Like what kind of qualifications or what kind of skill sets have you acquired? Because that could be used as example for the ones who are out there who are looking at you as a role model. So negotiation skills is one of the key things as a CFO mm -hmm. and when it comes to uh, people management mm -hmm. that also comes in handy definitely mm -hmm. if you have that and you need to understand the problem uh, throughout mm. uh, in order to give a proper solution at, at the correct time. So timely attending to a problem as well as uh, solving it. Mm -hmm will determine the entire course of uh, the finance direction of the company. Mm -hmm. Right, so making sure that um, timeliness is met always and uh, being punctual is one of the keys. So uh, people also speak about when it comes to creating, maybe educating themselves is also one of the ways and also experience. So if you take, out, take your life or anyone's life out there who is successful, what's the balance you see between the education and experience in terms of making yourself successful as an entrepreneur or a corporate personality? So education and experience actually go hand in hand as you said and it comes in handy uh, when it comes to the practical mm -hmm. application mm -hmm. of what you learned, mm -hmm. right? So. Uh, <laughs> So it's always about balancing the two. Yes, also balancing the two and people around you okay. uh, plays a big uh, part. In my life, I mean from my wife to yeah. my daughter to you know everyone yeah. around me yeah. uh, along with the personalities at my office yeah. uh, keeps me going day in and out uh, and gives that input that I need mm. to balance that uh, educational knowledge I got with the experience, experience that I'm have. gaining here. Okay, then what about the work-life balance? You mentioned about the, your, your family, right? And you mentioned about the work and the, and the people who are surrounding you at workplace. Uh, the work-life balance is something that we, we are dying to balance. It, people talk about work-life work -life balance, but then again, it's to, to manage that is something else. How do you do that? Because you have done it and you have got even like uh, accolated for that. So how did you do that? No, so it's challenging and I also fail uh, day <laughs> in and out. So I try to, you know, yeah. balance it as much as possible. Mm. And uh, people around me, as I said, uh, they try to understand me, I think, uh, while I try to understand them also. So it's an ongoing thing and that ongoing challenge that you have keeps you going as well. Okay. So the challenges sort of like, I mean, they are maybe activities yeah. in terms of the challenges, right? So. So the, the other side of your personality is something very active because he, he, uh, he's, you are a coach in triathlon, also duathlon, also water polo at the same time and you have, been a, you have even won competitions in terms of Sri Lanka and also abroad. Now, the big question is how do you do that? Because like it's, you are a CFO at the same time, group CFO, it's not a small task, like a big task, big responsibility. How do you manage the two? So it's like you, you know, get, when you get into a task, you concentrate only on that task. Mm. So you give your hundred percent or more to that particular task. Mm. And if you think, okay, you're a group CFO, you're a triathlon coach, and put all these things together, together. you will be a complete mess, yes. right? So <laughs> what you do is you just focus on 
what you are doing at that time, mm -hmm. uh, whatever it is. Okay. So, determination is one of the keys, I would yeah. suppose. So, d d by any chance, has your, your, your career in triathlonship or maybe in water polo, the, the sort of qualities you have gathered from that arena, has that helped you become the person you are in the corporate uh, landscape? Definitely. So, uh, people management skills as well as leadership skills and then how to understand mm -hmm. a different uh, person, uh, I mean individuals, how to work as a team and how to get a task completed as a team. Mm -hmm. All these things will come through uh, not only from sport, but mm -hmm. sport definitely helps that. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my life uh, that has helped uh, in a big way. So, say. okay, when did this happen? I mean, was it, did you become a CFO first or did you become a sportsman first? What happened? How did it happen? I mean, we, we, know, we want the story. <laughs> I think I became a sportsman first. First? Yeah, because uh, CFO story is like straight after school, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, sportsman was probably at the age of four onwards uh, when my father taught me the initial swim lesson. Uh -huh. yes. So that's how it's all started yeah. and now you ma managed to keep both the passion on your life yes. and also about the, about the corporate and the uh, corporate life also in uh, hand in hand. So uh, let us know for the uh, youngsters out there, there are people just like you mentioned that you became a sportsman from the younger stage and uh, there are students out there who are, I mean this is the problem that everybody has when they are at, at the younger stage, they managed, they, they try to balance the two, whether they want to do, do sports or they want to do academics. Sometimes people choose one, but you chose two. So what's the advice you want to give to the younger generations? So it's, you can actually decide what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. uh, in my case, what I decided to do is, as you said, in order to keep me going, mm -hmm. I decided, okay, I need to keep myself occupied uh, with something. So then what happened was, uh, I mean, I started focusing on sport even after school and uh, what I would tell the younger generation is you need to have that motivation drive and then the continuous learning uh, you need to like that mm. you need to first love that entire school I like create right? a passion out of it exactly mm -hmm. and then the determination commitment and the consistency mm -hmm. will only get you there and mm. it's you who will get you there mm -hmm. not anyone else you can have coaches you can have mentors you can have you know advisors you can watch YouTube videos whatever mm. but if you don't have the drive mm. you are you are never going to get there so you must have the drive and then you make sure that you want to want it at one point and, exactly. then, and then imagine yourself in the future so yeah. as a successful person, right? So about success, um, now you've been, you are an employee at the Eastman Brothers Company and you, you mentioned that during the pandemic also there were certain uh, uh, phases that the company had to go through. So what's the current stance uh, in, the, uh, in the company and what's in the future for Eastman Brothers? So Eastman Brothers, uh, as a as a group and as a company, as I said, uh, one venture that we are doing currently currently is uh, promoting, trying to promote artisanal tea tourism. And in addition to that, once the exchange uh, regulation uh, or the controls relaxes, mm -hmm. uh, we we are planning to uh, we are planning to uh, look at few foreign investments, which will. Uh, increase the dollar revenue that we can bring into the country mm. uh, and promote our business also mm. and grow as a business mm -hmm. and in addition to that we are moving towards automation, automation. continuously right. and we are investing in uh, machinery a lot mm -hmm. as well as in our brands mm -hmm. and we are we have uh, patented brands of our own mm -hmm. and uh, we are continuously into innovation and uh, product development right yes being a value-added tea company you need to do continuous uh, development as well as innovation mm -hmm. so do you do you produce different types of products for the sri lankan market and also for uh, different products for the outside of sri lanka like uh, markets in outside sri lanka so sri lanka what we do is about less than yes. one percent i would say right it's merely uh, to do with exports right so we do uh, our biggest market is Africa and in addition to that uh, mm -hmm. uh, the Middle East and then USA, UK and all these 57 countries 
that the ones you mentioned. Yeah. Okay. Catering. So that's the main market that you have. Yeah. Okay. So that's the Eastern Brothers. What about you? What's for you in the future? I mean, you are you're already a successful person when it comes to in both arms, uh, uh, be, uh, sports and also when it comes to corporate. What's in the future for you? What would you want to be? <laughs> that's an interesting question. I don't consider myself as a successful person still, mm -hmm. and I, I clearly think that I just started the journey, mm -hmm. and uh, it's like I started swimming today and mm -hmm. then I know I don't know what uh, lies there I will just grab the opportunity and see whether that will work for me mm -hmm. and if that works for me I will go in that direction and it might be a, a success or it might be a failure mm -hmm. I failed many times you mm -hmm. know and uh, uh, continuous failing only has <laughs> brought me to what I am today mm -hmm. even though I am not a success story still uh, I think I have a long way to go and mm -hmm. it's just started. Well, we think you are a success story and that's exactly why we are on business today today with us today. And well, we'd like to thank you once again for coming in today because uh, we ha we are going to wind up the program and we are thankful that you came today because we understand that you are extremely busy personality. You are you are involved in yourself and also in the growth of your company uh, at the same time. So thank you so much for joining in today with us on business today. Thanks a lot, Varuna. Thanks for inviting me again. Right, so on today's program, we had Mr. Sanjay um, Fernando, Group C uh, Chief Financial Officer of Eastern Brothers Exports, joining with us today for an extensive discussion on exports and also in terms of tea industry as well as corporate and also sportsmanship all in one. We'll be coming back uh, next week with a similar discussion with much more insightful topics. Have a good night.